What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? Don't ever wait for your doctor to order blood tests. With Private MD Labs, you can get your blood test prescription online in under one minute and go directly to over 4,000 lab locations in the United States. They offer every blood test imaginable at affordable prices with highly accurate results from tried and true state-of-the-art blood testing diagnostics. In fact, I've been using Private MD Labs for more than a decade. Their blood tests are much more in-depth and accurate than any at-home pinprick or worthless saliva test. Skip the intrusive doctor questions and get the exact tests that I recommend. Be proactive and get your panels today. Go to privatemdlabs.com forward slash JC to take 15% off your order. Send you guys love and light. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you might be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and you are, of course, watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my StreamYard virtual studio with an amazing dude by the name of Dr. Robert Cyprian. Dr. Rob, how are you, brother? Good. How are you doing? Amazing to have you. So, guys, uh, backstory, somebody in our mutual networks sent me a copy of his book uh, about probably six or seven months ago, maybe even at the early part of the year. And being Jay Campbell, I'm reading a lot of books at a lot of times. I eventually got to it and I read it. And I think I messaged you, what, four or five months ago and was like, dude, your book is insane. I want a podcast. And he had no idea who I was, right? Because I'm just like literally <laughs> messaging him. He doesn't know who I am, right? He's just like some guy's messaging me saying his podcast is amazing. And I literally even said to him, I'm like, do you know who this is? Because I love doing that to people. Because I knew you wouldn't. And, and he's like, uh, I don't. <laughs> like, it's Jay Campbell. And then I gave him my link and stuff. And he looked it up. And he's like, oh, cool. I was like, dude, I want to do a podcast with you. So he was gracious enough to join us. So let me give you guys his bio real quick. Um, so again, he has an amazing story. He is a former New York City gang member and an internationally renowned graphic i'm sorry graphic well it is graphics a graffiti artist okay so when i'm reading his book and i'm like reading his background i'm like holy shit but he is one of the children of the light and you guys will see that in this podcast today he became actually a doctor of holistic medicine and is a chiropractor a teacher author and a life coach through his own search just like all of us for healing and well-being he graduated from Cleveland Chiropractic College of Los Angeles in 2000, was a board certified teacher for the International College of Applied Kinesiology, so he's very familiar with this, from 2004 to 2020, and has studied various healing, energetic, spiritual modalities over the past 25 years. With all that said, he also just left the demonic hellhole of Washington, D.C. and relocated to Florida, which he's going to probably talk a little bit about in this podcast. Uh Dr. Rob, it is an honor to have you here today, man. How, I mean, isn't it amazing how the world works that like you and I just found each other just from your book? I mean, can you kind of talk about that? <laughs> I love it. I mean, it's the only way I got here is really just, you know, every day when you wake up, what's going to show up in your life, what opportunities you're going to take, where you're going to go. When you're more aware, literally life just shows you things like a roadmap. And, you know, then life just becomes... A beautiful thing yeah you still got the stresses and things to deal with but at least you know every day you're you're taking your next step taking your next step taking your next step so for like you know us to get connected here it's just kind of like well yeah that's what i've been like doing my whole life is just kind of getting from you know being a thug on the streets of queens new york to getting into medical school and becoming a post-grad teacher and even like me someone that was kind of like hanging out with these you know thugs and criminals I wound up teaching in Secret Service headquarters in D.C., a class for the agents there about how to reduce stress in their life and how to do some other things. And like, that's one of the biggest achievements in my life. Just like, I can't believe I did that. That was crazy. That's amazing, bro. I mean, look, 
l- let's go back and deconstruct though, because that experience of you being working with, you know, as you call them thugs, whatever you want to call them. I mean, that's part of the evolution of a soul, right? Like, cause we're really just here to evolve and grow our souls, right? You and I know these physical bodies are an invention, right? Like to ambulate around, to experience living in the third dimension. But like, that was part of your deal. Like, you know, your early expression, which was truly a, a, the, the most, you know, raw and visceral artistic expression of doing graffiti art. And, and by the way, uh, just so you know, uh, I'm almost 51. Um, and I spent five years um, in, in central New York and upstate in Utica. But my best friend was a Korean uh, uh, immigrant. His dad owned a toy store in the city. So in the summers, we worked together when I was uh, thir- 12, 13, and 14 in New York City, taking the subways on my own, you know, going through all there. So dude, like subway art and graffiti art was like a way of being for me. Like, you know, I was all into Grandmaster Melly Mel and, you know, all of that stuff and just like, you know, Beach Street, you know, all that stuff. I mean, that's like rooted through my sense of being. So like when I saw you, it just like I interconnected like with that, like thinking, holy shit, I probably saw some of this dude's work. I mean, like literally I probably saw, it. I mean, because your work was probably all over the city, right? Yeah, I mean, more late 80s, early 90s. We're about the same age. So when I was getting to be around um, 20, 21, that's where I started getting well, more well known. Before then, it's just kind of dabbling and figuring stuff out. And then at a certain point, like I found some mentors in the graffiti culture to kind of say, you know, show me how to paint art better. Show me where to get my name seen more. Show me, hey, where do you paint on the trains? Where do you paint on the rooftops? Where do you paint on the trucks? So I went through a whole mentorship of that stuff. And that, that was kind of crazy. Yeah, Dude, that's amazing. I'm sure you have insane stories about that. But I, I do want to talk to you about your spirituality and, you know, finding yourself. And, you know, again, we, we have similar stories, but, you know, you've given me a lot of amazing talking points. The first one, and I definitely want to talk about this is what we're at right now, right? It's a systematic repression of spiritual spiritualness or spiritual beings in this current you know, third dimensional world or construct that we're existing in right now. I mean, they, this is a full out systematic attack of every level, every level of who we are as again, spiritual beings. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. I've always seen where, um, you know, where it was more subtle, where people just make fun of you for, you know, having spiritual beliefs, religious beliefs, stuff like that. Right. Back in about 93, I was actually, and this is where kind of like my concept of this really started of kind of what was going on with suppression. Back in about 93, uh, me and my one of my graffiti partners was on this talk show um, in New York, you know, one of the daytime talk shows uh, that was involving graffiti and like Fat Joe was on there and some other people and stuff. There's some famous people on there. We were on a talk show and I'm in the back in the green room talking with this guy from Zulu Nation. Wow. And this guy a younger guy um he's he was breaking down to me like the illuminati the new world order what they have planned and everything and i was just like glued to this i'm just like my wheels are spinning i'm like wow 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 and then a couple years later i moved to start medical school in la and i always had that framework in my mind and i've seen kept seeing what he talked about again it's just been steadily increasing 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 to shut us down for these powerful free beings that we are. And that's the whole thing. We just got to realize how powerful and free we are because they can't stop us if we really realize it. So all they could do is kind of trick us into feeling that we're not that. Once, as I like to say, once it's seen, it can't be unseen. Uh The problem is, as you know, is that the majority of people refuse to see. I mean, truth is a resonant force. It is a way of being. And most people, again, don't want truth. I mean, remember the Jack Nicholson, Tom Cruise, you know, a few good men, you know, it, it, it's, it, you know, again, Hollywood is the great cipher, you know, you spent time in Los Angeles, but it, we're out of place now, bro. Again, I was talking to you off air. I mean, let's just be honest. And let me, for the pr- purposes of t- time and date, podcast queue is backed up. This is November 11th, 2021. So we're in the thick of it right now. And Most people, as you know, um, Doc, literally cannot deal with truth. You know, Mm -hmm. they would rather be told what to do, you know, not examine their self, their true sovereign state, you know, essence 
as a soul and placate and lay down and, you know, just go along, get along. Right. Like I look at all these kids, you know, and again, I'm not, you know, there's, there's outliers and I'm not judging or, 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 or uh, you know, condemning or anyone, but I mean, I look at a lot of these young kids and I know, you know, this, but let's talk about this. I look at a lot of these young kids who literally bro grow up with this shit in their hands since they were four or five. And even if their parents are good parents, they still are in high schools or grade schools, or I mean, not grade schools, but you know, intermediary and kindergarten and pre where they're using technology, right? So, so all they know from a critical skill thinking and discernment standpoint is how to ask this device for the answer. And so when you have millions upon hundreds of millions of young people, and again, I'm pretty much now qualifying or qualitating thir under 30 who have grown up with these devices, who do their thinking. I mean, let's face it, th these think for them, these record notes, take notes, regurgitate information, download information. I mean, dude, you and I grew up and we had to use the Dewey decimal system. We, you know, we had to go to the card catalog. Then we actually had to go to the back of the library if we didn't have a research helper or a librarian and find it. I mean, it was a process and now you got to learn it. You got to read it. You got to take notes. You got to highlight it. Then you study it. Then you listen to a you know, teacher talk about it. And then you take an exam. Dude, those days are gone. They don't even have books in universities now. Right. So if you're believing this, which we both know isn't even good yet, then how the hell do these young people today, bro, have discernment? How would they even know what's legit and what's not? Especially when they go on the internet and they just Google this term or whatever they're looking for, and there's 500 quote unquote experts telling them what this material is about. You see what I'm saying? It's a different world for these young people than the world that you and I grew up in. Because again, at that point, there weren't thousands of experts. There was one or two, maybe three. And one of them happened to be your teacher. <laughs> you know what I mean? And your university when you were going to school. So, I mean, like it's a different world nowadays. And I think that the biggest issue is discernment. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So the only way to get out of um, you know, life with those blinders with, with, you know, with, with exactly. that in front of you, the only way to get out of there. And even for me back in my day, when I was kind of stuck where I was, the only thing that's going to really wake you up is just boom, exactly. something big's going to hit you and that spirit. Right. And I look at my life, my biggest traumatic times were my biggest blessings because what it did is I put a choice in my life, a fork in the road, keep doing this or do something different. And I, for the most part, always took the higher path, the higher path, the higher path. So even the kids today, if they're stuck with the internet or stuck with, you know, whatever cultural programming they're going through, they can get that that spiritual two by four over the head and all of a sudden everything they knew is what the world was is not there anymore. They can see through it. It's distorted and they could choose a new path. So that does happen. I've, I've met some, you know, younger people who are just brilliant and curious and asking me millions of things. And I'm just like, wow, like, 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 cool. I literally last week, I, I just moved to Miami, Florida and, I had my little coffee spot about 15 minute walk away. I always like to get moving in the morning. And so I always set up having coffee every day at home. I go grab a book. I go take a walk about 15 minutes. I'm leaving this coffee shop and sit outside and I got my book in my hand and I'm going to walk back home. And this young gentleman stops me in the street. He's like delivering food or something. He's picking up food. And he goes, excuse me, sir, sir, can I ask you a question? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And he goes, points to my book. He goes, do you think books could help people? And I'm looking at him for a minute, and I'm like, "Wow!" I'm like, What's the "Is this guy you, okay? Is he trying to like, you know, <laughs> is he trying to pull something over on me? Like, am I in danger right now? I'm like looking around, <laughs> check, checking my back, you know? I'm like, I'm like, yeah, books can help people." He goes, "Oh, okay, thank you." And I go, "Why? What do you want help with?" And he pulls out his phone, and he just opens a screen on his phone, and on his phone he had like three or four books lined up that he was looking at on some website for mental health, depression, anxiety, wow. stuff like that. And I'm like, yes, books can help with that. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. 
He goes, yeah, you think so? I said, yes, definitely start reading up on it. You could do so much for yourself. Definitely goes, okay, thank you. And he took off. And I was just like, wow. That's amazing, bro. That was a weird experience. But I think it's kind of showing me where people are. I'm like, do people not read books anymore? I mean, is that really what's going on? You know, I mean, like, wow. That's, I mean, that's amazing. I mean, think of how you profoundly helped that kid. But I mean, that also bears the story of where we're at, dude. Mm -hmm. I mean, these young people don't even know that. Like that question, which you're kind of like thinking like, is this a trick question? Is candid camera behind me? Or is he about <laughs> to pull one over me? Or they're about to rob me? I mean, yeah, because guys like you and me, or that's the first thought, like what the fuck's going on here? But he was genuinely asking uh, what he would call a, a sage, a, an older person who has a book, who clearly is a well put together guy like you, like for help, because he doesn't have that kind of, you know, you know, probably mentorship or, 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 or a role model that he can ask that question for. But dude, that's what I'm saying. And that was my point is that there are so many men and young women like that right now out there. And many of these people have been already forced to do, you know, what and mm -hmm. take the, the mark, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, at the end of the day, you know, the, let's just call them the parasitic energies. Those who would hold us back, whoever and whatever they are, right? Behind the veil, Anunnaki, I don't give a shit, <laughs> right? It could all be him, dark side, right? Like, I don't care, right? It, it, we just know what they're about and, and how to avoid them by staying up here, right? But, yeah. but the reality is, is that these kids, dude, don't have mentorship that you and I had. We had great books. We had great teachers, <laughs> You know, we had a system, what, you know, I'll talk about the university system that wasn't communism. I mean, dude, everything's communism today. I mean, everybody who is anybody who knows how the system is working now, it's like, you know, go along, get along. It's literally, you know, teach people that it's collectivism. It's not about independence. It's not about, again, discernment. It's not about critical thinking. It's literally, it's the right thing to do. Everybody else is doing it. I mean, it's, it's, it's insane what they've done, but again, it's up to the parent, myself and my wife and my inner circle of people to influence the children that, you know, we have influence over to, that there is a better way. Cause I mean, obviously Robert, you know, at this point, if we don't have people like us still out there talking about this, you know, woo woo stuff, like, where is this planet going to go, dude? I mean, it's not going to go good. <laughs> right. Yes. I mean, we have to just be that lighthouse, be that shining light for whoever is like attracted to us to ask us a question, to just hang around us, to, 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 you know, come in, come in for our services, like whatever we can do for them. And um, I mean, I had to, you know, go through a lot of crap to get there myself. And I'm still every day trying to go further and further and further. Um, yeah, but but that book with the chart and back you power versus force that book changed my life. That book changed my life. What one of my mentors um, back in the late '90s told me to read it, and I read that probably like several times through back to back. Wow. Hey guys, what's going on? If you're looking to level up your life from a mind, body, and spiritual perspective, join the fully optimized health private membership group today. There is no better place online to discuss hormones, peptides, fitness, fat loss, supplements, and even raising your consciousness with an elite tribe of men and women. You also get to speak to me directly every single week in the Ask Me Anything. Join today. Go to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up, and I'll see and talk to you soon. As the great Hawkins, Dr. Hawkins says, it's not always right and ready at that moment that you read it but you you know being a seeker walking as i call the path will eventually come back to it you know again we're all walking the same path back to perfection at various rates and speed and no speed is better than another right so it's like you know some people that young guy is like asking you about the books you know is not at your conscious level of development but what's most important is he is on the path to be where you're going to be or where you have gotten. And again, as you said, we're ever learning. You, you eventually get to a place where it's like, the more, you know, the less, you know, or what is it? Mm -hmm. The more you low, the more you've learned, the less, you know, 
It's yeah. literally that simple. This is a cosmic web of, you know, espionage and intrigue and wonder and all. It's just, it's insane of all the stuff that's going on. But like, you know, you will get to eventual level. You said something, the magical word of spirit. And I like to call spirit the higher self. You know, it's that connection with the greater being the, the essence of who you really are, that spirit being internally of your physical body, which isn't even real. But that connection to that spirit, that higher self, that intuition, some people call it the super conscious, that's what matters. And it's like mm -hmm. when you develop that connection through meditation, through introspection, through you know mindfulness, through sitting in nature with your dog, grounding, whatever it is that you do, that is when awareness, true knowing slash what I call cosmic awareness really comes into your, your state of being. Right. And as you know, it's not a thinking thing. It's a feeling thing. It's a, it's a getting to that place again, through all those things we just talked about, or I just mentioned, and then having that awareness again, through the feeling and, and, and that takes work, bro. Right. I mean, like, you know, I tell people all the time and, and I have a similar, you know, upbringing to you. I mean, I definitely did all sorts of dastardly deeds in my teenage years. Uh, wasn't caught somebody that I was involved with was and imp implicated me. But, but, but the reality is, is that it's part of the path. And eventually you get to an awareness of like, man, I have to sit down and I have to reach stillness. I have to take all of this seriously and I have to integrate, you know, my traumas and, 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 and impersonalize Jay Campbell, Dr. Robert Cyprian, and realize that all of us are connected through that spirit, through that higher self, through that internal awareness that we are all one, right? Unity, oneness, whatever you want to call it. And it's, it doesn't come naturally, bro. It takes work. Yeah. You, you have to create effort with action to seek it and it will come back to you. You got to put something out in the universe to receive something in the universe. Dude, that's beautiful. Effort with action. Love that. Effort with and action. That's going to be so many, so, so many people lately like, oh, I thought about getting into healing and I've taken this hypnosis course or this NLP and I want to start working with clients, you know, and I'm like, well, do it. They're like, oh, but like, I don't have a place to work and I, you know, this and that. I'm like, just work on somebody, work on your friend, work on your neighbor, work yeah. on anybody. Just start. Um, exactly I right. had this patient in D.C., who did some very high-end kind of, um, I don't know what you call it, litigation work, whatever. They weren't a lawyer, but they did all sorts of other very high-end work to help things get settled between companies and everything. Like, we're talking millions and millions of dollars. And um, they were very intuitive. And they're like, oh, you know, I really feel that, you know, I, I have this abilities for healings and stuff like that and whatever. And I'm like, well, just start. They're like, what do you mean just start? I'm like, work on somebody. Work on a friend, work on your neighbor. So this woman, she like worked on her niece and a few other people. And then like two weeks later, I get an email from her. She was like, I, I have like 11 people to work on this week. I'm going to go, wow, 11 people in a week? That wow. is great. Just because she started, she just put the energy out there. This is what she wanted to do. And the universe started just like giving it back in a wave. That's exactly it, man. Profound. Couple things you got. Well, there's a lot of talking points, and we're going a lot of different directions. But you, you know, you, what what is your definition? I love this holistic well-being. What? How do you define that? Well, what holistic is? It's looking at every single aspect that you can of your well-being in life. Now, that includes basic medical exams and care. That may include body work, like chiropractic, massage, tweena, other different types of physical body work. That also includes looking at your diet, um, make sure you get enough nutrients, but make sure you don't have too much of something, which is a toxicity. It's also looking at the mental, emotional. The emotional is kind of like the stored type of emotional things you have, and the mental is how your brain operates to make new decisions and do new things in life. And, you know, if you're happy or sad or what you kind of gravitate toward with your mind. And then there's a spiritual energetic. So you have to look at all of those things to really look at what's going on holistically. Now, this can be like, all right, say 10 people have migraines. There might be seven different reasons the 10 people have migraines, if you're looking at it holistically. Some might be their necks out of place. Some might be their breathing in toxins in their office, which is just, you know, this enclosed cubicle. Some might be just stress of relationship or 
family or their job. Some might be the foods that they're eating. So holistic, it doesn't always mean woo woo out there crazy. It just means you're looking at everything. Because I mean, I've had people come into me and I'm like, you need to go to the ER right now. And that's being holistic too, that they need medical intervention immediately. You're a man, how do I say this? You are a man of few but very precise words. I really like that about you. Um, tr so tra transformation, like what does that mean? Like, and, and let me let me give a background on that. My opinion, and I always love to say that the Egyptians in the mystery schools, which again, yeah, other than people of my, your age and my age, they would have fucked the mystery school, right? Like the mystery schools didn't even allow an aspirant until they were four. Okay, because the they thought that again the mind body awareness could not take effect until a person had four decades of experience in the physical real life, right? So I'm interested in what your take is because you're like me. You've been you've worn many hats, right, in your life to go from you know uh, a street graffiti artist, you know you call yourself with your friends thugs or whatever, you know to a a formal physician, you know, healer, body worker, uh, you know, doing all sorts of sacred energy work and healing. Um, so that's a lot of hats, but like, what do you really call transformation in life? What, what would you, how would you phrase it or define it? Transformation is when you come to a point for one reason or another to kind of, um, let one aspect of you, maybe beliefs or how to view the world or whatever, you let, let that just be there and you surpass it. And you have a new set of views on the world's way working with the world. Um, Cause that's what you want to do. You want to transform something's not serving you anymore. You want to switch it up and be on a new track. Like for me, I've done so many things over the years. I mean, just from what you read in my book, I have a lot of crazy stories. Yeah. But even after I read my book last year, I went on a retreat with this woman, Sasha Cobra. Have you ever heard of her? Don't think so. Probably, but um, I, I, she doesn't, yeah. I doesn't recall. On Netflix, there is this um, show called Unwell. She's on episode two of Unwell. It's kind oh, of about her. Oh, that's how I know her. Yes, I yeah. have seen that show. Okay. So I'm friends with some people in the hip hop music industry. I'm friends with this, I'm really good friends with this guy, Slim Kid Trey from The Far Side from LA from the 90s. Oh, I love The Far Side. That is literally hilarious. Yeah. And he's a spiritual guy too. He teaches meditation classes. He, awesome. he got The Far Side become successful through the contemplation and meditation. That's a crazy story. You should interview him one day. He's, if you he's get, really dude, if out you there. Me, if you could connect yeah. me with him, I'd love to bring him on the podcast. Yeah, dude, he's, he's amazing. Uh huh. He's amazing. They're still, my, they're still on my in my track list right now. Uh huh. Anyway, he's like wow. Robert. You gotta check out this woman Sasha. She does this great energy work. It's related to sacred sexuality and everything. I'm like, okay, cool. You know. So I was like following her on social media for a couple of years, and then I started like listening to her more and more. When the lockdown started happening, she started talking more on social media and doing more YouTube videos, and then she like had this retreat. I'm like, I'm going to go to this retreat and check her out because she's really deep, really amazing. So last year, middle of the pandemic in Tulum, we take over this whole resort, 42 of us. No one's got masks on. Everyone's fine. Yeah. We're, we're awesome. in the jungle, taking over this whole resort. Beautiful. It was a nine day retreat, three different workshops a day. And after the first three, four days, I'm like, this is amazing. This is great. Like, There's a lot of things I know already, but just kind of teaching people intuition and feeling energy and doing energy work. And I'm like, this is great. This is worth the money. You know, because I spent a lot of money on it and I had to take off several weeks from work. Then the fourth day I was working with one of the partners kind of working back and forth, um, doing energy work in each other. And I was getting some energy work done on me around my head. And the woman that was working at me, she got a, a back pain. So she had to get up and stretch. And I was like, out of it just from the meditation and the energy work i was out of it so this woman that was working on me she's like oh sasha can you come take care of robert while i go stretch and sasha's like oh sure you know and this woman she's 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 young she's beautiful she's like this little fairy goddess right and she just comes over and she just lightly so lightly just touches my earlobes of her fingers like so delicately and 
boom, my whole body imploded into light. I just wow. lost who I was, where I was. I just ascended through dimensions and it went on for about an hour. Like the most, it's like, I just dropped ayahuasca, like instantly my whole body just like, whew, just disappeared. That's amazing. She, she, you know, literally, and I cried for days and days, probably a couple of weeks afterwards. I just cried from the beauty. I see, I, I saw, I just cried. I literally tell her, she made me lose my shit, which was, yeah, she made me lose all my lower vibrating energies. Right, they right. just got dissolved out of me. So even me, what I've been doing for decades of work and all this stuff, this little chick comes over and she just touches me for a moment and boom, a oh. whole new experience of transformation. That's why I'll never stop searching. I'll never stop searching. You don't know who you're going to meet next. You don't know who you're going to learn from next. You have no idea. I mean, we just learn from each other. That's profound, bro. I mean, so I had the same thing happen to me, not with a, a, a human being touching me, but using MEO the first time that I used 5-MEO. And this is literally two months. It, it definitely uh, contributed to it. But this was two months from my rock bottom as a physical being in this third dimension, which was, as you know, you know, and I can say this, you know, to my audience, but like, losing everything but gaining everything you know or, or losing everything and 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 gaining the awareness that it was nothing right because it's yeah. again it's material it's absolutely meaningless but again until you get to that level of awareness where material things are meaningless that doesn't make any sense to you as you mm -hmm. know and i always say this um if you asked a hundred people on the street right now you and i were having coffee together and we just decided to take you know in downtown Miami, South Beach, whatever, we just decided to both interview 100 total people. And we said, hey, what is your mission and purpose in this life? At most, two people would give us an answer that was worth an answer. Most people define their mission and purpose as that I'm a good dad, I'm a good husband, I own this business, I do this, I do that, blah, blah, blah. but it's all third dimensional trappings of materialism. It's what we're attached to that gives us you know, purpose and meaning. And it's not until, and dude, this is so profound that you and I are having the show right now because I posted this on my Twitter today, which is where I post all my spiritual musings. But I literally said that it's not until you get to a place of, again, pure awareness, pure consciousness, whatever you want to call it. And that place allows you to enjoy just being, right? Yes. Like, like, but that was, but that's your story that exploding into light. Cause all we are is light fractals at base essence. Anyway, we're like plasmatic balls of fire. You experienced your base essence mm -hmm. and you became that being irrespective of your Robert Cyprian physical body, chiropractor, blah, 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 seeker, you know what I mean? So it's like, but you have to get there. And unfortunately not everybody gets there. On, at, again, at the same rate and speed. But once you get there, that's when you do realize when you come back into these physical bodies, because yes, we do live in the third dimension. And yes, we do have to pay bills. And yes, we have to navigate between, you know, all of this shit. But it's like, you know, my wife is really good at me for good for me, bro. And she's my spiritual mentor. And I'm very blessed. But I get caught up, dude. In, 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 in being a co-founder of a company that's scaling and I get attached to wanting th things to go well or doing this or helping that, you know, and again, at the end of the day, for me, it's always about service to humanity or creation, you know, at my highest and best good. But if you don't step back and again, how do you do that? You go into nature, you meditate, contemplate, become introspective. You just shut the fuck up and sit there and observe. If you don't do that regularly, you just get sucked into the matrix. And so that is the hardest part even of a master spiritually who, who the most spiritually aware is again, navigating where you can appreciate being more so than doing. It's kind of when you just stop giving a damn things just start flowing. Dude, that's so beautiful. Yes. The, the, yes. the, the biggest problem I have with attachment is my books. That's the biggest thing when I had to move is my biggest headache is packing all my books. One day I was looking at them and after I moved them a few times now, and I'm like, I think I might let some of these go in the near future. Yeah. <laughs> That's so awesome, man. I mean, dude, like the last week I've been really attached 
because we just hired a CEO and we hired a director of corporate strategy and you know, they're, they're doing what they, those people do. They're tasking me with getting them all this stuff. And I'm like, you know, questioning myself and wanting things to be a certain way. And, you know, my wife said to me like two days ago, she's like, dude, fucking who gives a shit? She's like, let it go. You are who you are. You're not any of those things that you've considered yourself to be or want yourself to be. Again, it, there is only now. But the, 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 again, the trappings of the material reality that you and I both exist in are very powerful. And even when you are doing things and you do know your purpose and you understand how to create your heaven on earth and you are familiar with all of these spiritual teachings, you still can be pulled right back into it if you're not, like you said, constantly learning, constantly observing and remaining unattached. And even remaining unattached is a job. Yep. Lack has been one of my biggest teachers. Sure. Lack financially, lack romantically, just lack has it, sometimes it gets overwhelming. It's just like, you know what? I need to just let this go. And when I do, I can become happy without it. I've even gone as far as to just really meditate and fantasize on what if I was homeless? Could I be happy? Could I be happy just living on the street? Could I be happy if I was put in a little, you know, secluded jail cell with no windows can i be happy there i i put myself in those places before and really tried to meditate and contemplate on that and i've had a lot of breakthroughs with picturing the worst and just seeing how i would be happy there just by acknowledging who i really am hey guys and gals what's going on if you're looking to use peptides make sure you go to my number one source limitless life nootropics for healing with BPC-157 and TB-500 or fat loss with ipamorelin, CGC-1295 and AOD-9604 to immunity with TA-1, thymus and alpha-1, Limitless has a huge selection. Go to LimitlessLifeNootropics.com and use my code J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I send you guys tremendous love and light. I'll be honest. Um... That's kind of what I do too. You know, I, 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 I don't do that, which is great. I'm going to start doing that. But I think <laughs> about times in my life where I have been literally like up shit Creek without a paddle and <clears throat> going right to that spot at that moment then and saying, okay, well, the being that I am now, how will I be? Right. Because at that time I'm looking at this as like, Oh my God, my life's over. Blah, blah, blah. You know, cause again, you know, the difference again, you know, I always say the difference in everything is perception. People like me and you walking this path, familiar with the works of Hawkins and, you know, Neville Goddard and, and Walter Russell and all these great deep metaphysical, philosophical spiritualists, you know, those guys figured out that it was about maintaining the path above all else, it didn't really matter. You know, like you said, like running out of black, by the way, I love that. I mean, we're all, you and I are from this, around the same age. So we have parents that taught us about scarcity because their fucking parents were in the depression. You know, those people literally lived in times where there was no food. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where they literally had to ration one meal a day for their family or whatever it was, right? So that, that transferred literally through the DNA, right? You talk about transpersonal trauma, the sins of the fathers or however you want to call it, right? Like that is being carried over in the DNA. So it's like that lack and that scarcity, dude, that shit you and I inherited. I mean, that takes deep deprogramming, looking it in, you know, observing it, being okay with it. Like you said, just letting it go, realizing that it's all bullshit. Dude, my dad is 76 and he's still playing the lack game. I got an operation to run. <laughs> I, I mean, dude, he, I mean, it's like he's a multimillionaire and he just sits there and he's like so concerned with hoarding it and preventing it and doing all this, this, you know, and he's, he lives in his house and, you know, you're talking about not letting go of things. Like my wife and I call that compartmentalization disorder mm -hmm. where you really don't understand what's important and what is. Yeah. And so you're, as you age, you're, you're, you're hoarding it. And you can't let it go. Every single thing, Robert, is so critically important. You cannot let it go. It's a part of you. You know what I mean? And it's like, no, motherfucker. You, none of that shit is, it's all meaningless. Who gives a shit? Give it to somebody who's going to use it. 
Yeah. You actually might read the book that you read 40 years ago that you can't give up. You know what I'm saying? So, dude, this is, I, I mean, man, I, you've said so much. I mean, fuck, you made me think about stuff. I mean, that's such a beautiful thing, though, putting yourself in a place that could make it from an from a perception standpoint and, a, and an ex existential standpoint, like, bad, right? Yeah, the worst but, you can imagine. But the difference really, though, and you're really making me think, this is heart stuff, though, is that most people, bro, they can't define it as that opportunity for growth, right? Like you're literally putting yourself in a four by four cell because you know that that four by four cell is going to make you appreciate what you have now. But most people literally can't appreciate anything because they still are caught up in the material trappings of what is. You know what I mean? And so it's like, it's so hard. And I know I fall into that realm all the time myself. Again, when I, when I, when I put my Jay Campbell business guy hat on co-founder hat on, and that's where I have to like, again, pull back. I mean, again, what you, I'm really kind of speechless right now. Cause you gave me so many good, amazing ideas about how like you can put your mind and put your focus in that. But where, where, again, where I see it, I want your feelings is that most people can't define times in their life that they look at as failures, as learning opportunities, as experiences to grow from. And I think it does take a time, again, living in this material reality and, and, and of course, inner work where you can actually get to a place where you can look back on those things and actually be grateful for having the experience, right? Failure is the biggest teacher. And, you know, all the big success people say that. So um, the founder of Applied Kinesiology, the muscle testing that's used for doctors to figure out health things and where Dr. Hawkins eventually got it from to measure consciousness, that was Dr. Goodhart. He passed away about 10 years ago, I think. So Dr. George Goodhart was an amazing man. I, I'm, I'm just so honored that I got to spend some time around him wow. in his later years and stuff like that. But the funny thing was when he would lecture to doctors, I mean, like rooms of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of doctors, he would only lecture about his failures only. And somebody asked him, like, why don't you ever talk about your successes? He goes, there's nothing to learn from that. I know that. I know how to fix that. I want to lecture about the things I didn't know how to fix. That's there you go. Wow. Because that's how he, that's how he grew. That's how he learned more is like. I got a problem. I can't figure this out. Like, well, you got to like transform. You got to leave behind what you think you know and step it up to something else. And then the whole perception of like, there is no difference between success and failure. It's just the observation of what do I learn from each, but how did you roll with that dude? Well, just, so I, I was so lucky when, you know, I left New York just to get away from the violence and, you know, just the stress and everything. I mean, you know, I, I like every, I got to the point where every noise I would hear at night, I'm like getting up with a gun and checking the windows and everything and stuff like that. And um, I just like, I just got to leave New York. You know, I just stay awake at night with PTSD, like watching things in my mind over and over again of violence that happened and stuff like that. So I moved to California to go to chiropractic medical school thinking, oh, I'm going to work on football players. I want to do sports medicine, right? When I got there, within the first month or two, I went to this guy's office in Southern California, Dr. Howard Cohn, and uh, he was doing like a health um, education workshop for his patients. Everyone's like, oh, you got to see this guy, what he does. And he was doing all this crazy muscle testing stuff on people, and um yeah, I was just like, I just felt in my heart, no, that's what I got to do. Forget about the football, sports, medicine stuff. I got to do whatever this holistic medicine, muscle testing stuff is. And through there, I mean, he knew Dr. He was in the International College of Applied Kinesiology, and he knew his other doctors, very close to Dr. Goodhart. Like, Dr. Goodhart come to town, he'd come pick him up in his car and drive him around. Wow. So I had opportunities to like, you know, go to lunch with these guys. And he's like, oh, you know, Dr. Goodhart will be in town. You should buy him to come speak at your college. And I did that. I brought him to my school. There's like hundreds of people there to see him. And even like, you know, the staff is there to see him and stuff like that. I'm like, well, why didn't other people do this? Why didn't other people invite him to come speak at the school? So I kind of got to be a little bit of, um, you know, a networking um, 
person between some of the students and with some of these other docs that were great mentors. Because that's another most amazing thing. Anything you want in life, find a mentor for it, but find someone that's really successful at it and just be like, hey, can I can I buy you a cup of coffee? If you don't have much money, can I buy you a coffee and talk to you about what you do? Or can I can I volunteer around your workspace or your office to do some work for you? You know, I could learn from you. So you just got to get around these people as mentors. And, you know, if they're really a good person, most very successful people are good people. They will be like, oh, yeah, sure. Let me show you what I do. Let me talk to you. Let me give you some tips, you know, because mentors are so important. You can stand on someone's shoulders that's already where you want to be. And then later in life, you can even get higher than that. Beautiful, man. I mean, again, dude, I'm so glad I had you on my podcast, but that is in and of itself, the easiest way, again, standing on the shoulders of giants, the easiest way is to just ask for help, to yeah. ask for mentorship. And again, so many people won't make that ask or refuse again, due to fear, you know, again, due to the ego overriding the soul uh, whose true desire is obviously for evolution and growth. I mean, that again, that's all we're here. You know, this is a school. The earth is a school. And as a soul level, we are, you know, basically incarnating to involve and grow so that, you know, the oversoul, source consciousness, God, whatever you want to call it, universal consciousness, whatever you want to call, you know, the master, the creator of all, is learning and growing. You know, and you say that, you know, Abrahamic people are like, God is omniscient. God does it learn and grow. Well, I mean, dude, the fact that you and I are alive. Well, that's what he created us for. <laughs> <laughs> There's just so much brainwashing, as you know, and God knows the Abrahamic and even the Eastern, you know, it's all, all they have. They all have amazing foundational principles, but it takes a pure heart to discern truth and error, you know, and the error is very strategic to throw us off the path. But as you know, as I said earlier, and you know, again, these are just things that I'm constantly learning. It's not about thinking, it's about feeling. It's about knowing versus believing. And you cannot know or feel until you're willing to do that work to attain that stillness, that mind silence, whatever you want to call it, where you're sitting there and the energy and frequency of all things, source consciousness pervades you and your sense of being. And that's when you have all the answers. It's like, it's in the stillness that you, you learn, you know, and, and that's again, also the state where okay. things just show up in your life. Exactly. When you're in that space, like, Oh, I want this to happen. Boom. It just shows up in your life. And you're like, how'd that happen? Because you're in this, right. Not only sensing, but also output to what you need. You're in that flow. So true, dude. So true. What, one of the greatest things, uh, one of the greatest things that I have learned in this dimension of absolutely voracious seeking is that we're not designed to know it all in the third dimension. Oh, no. we, we incarnated here through the veil of forgetfulness to continue the evolution that our souls need and really that source needs, right? So it's like we volunteered, um, Doc, to forget. So why are you attempting to get all the answers, you know, in the third dimension? And I think all the great spiritual seekers, you know, have to go through that stage, right? It's an evolutionary part of your stage of like, okay, I'm not trying to figure it out. You know, the source of mankind's ancestry or whatever it is, the guys like you and I, you know, you were talking about the Illuminati and, you know, hearing all this, you know, reptilians on Anaki. I mean, it's like, that's cool, but like you, you eventually get over that. And it's like now, like, how do I be, how do I learn to be instead of doing, you know, again, humans doing versus humans being only a small percentage of people can appreciate the desire of being. And once you get to that level of like, it's an awareness of like, wow, I'm fucking chill, dude, just sitting in my backyard and listening to the bees. And, and appreciating that, that's when you can get to that place of what you were saying, a flow where it's like, you know what? I'm detached, man. And, 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 and honestly, you know, just to give the audience some pointers or not pointers, but just like my awareness is like, dude, when I get stuck in the third dimension, whatever it is, I leave my office, 
you know, this is my studio office and I go outside in my backyard and I am very blessed. I live at 1800 feet in Marietta, which is locale, San Diego weather, one fifth of the cost. And it's blue sky, no smog, no, you know, very little interference from them. And my dog, my pit bull follows me out there and sits next to me. And I just close my eyes, dude, and just let the sun hit my skin. And all it, all it takes is five or 10 minutes. And it's an instant Robert change to my state of being. And then I can literally walk back into my office and pick up and all of that overwhelm and all of that bullshit is gone. And it's nature, as you know, that is that source energy of, cre of creation, of creation consciousness, as I call it, that will give you the power to get back into the flow state. But dude, how many people really actually do that or, or know that and then do that every day? Well, nature is what we actually are. Right. And like right now I'm separated from it in my little concrete and metal air conditioned little box here. I'm separated from nature. You know what I mean? But man, just first thing in the morning, like I open my sliding glass doors and there's palm trees and it's warm. And I'm like, oh, you know what I mean? Just let be connected with what I am again, you know? That's exactly right, bro. That's literally exactly right. All right, you have two more bullet points that I would be remiss if we didn't talk about it. We can merge them because they're very similar. All right. Sacred sexuality and the divine masculine. Now, let me just say that when I saw that bullet point, I was like, I'm saving that for last. <laughs> so I, I'm very familiar with the works of doc, not doctor, but David Data, and I'm sure uh -huh. you are too, right? Yeah. Um, and I've also just, you know, I've worked with a lot of amazing women healers and teachers and mentors, uh, you know, who talk about the divine feminine and divine masculine and all of those things. How would, how would you classify right now just having as a being, male or female, an awareness of sacred sexuality and why it's actually so important? And I have my own, but I want to hear yours. I feel that it's really understanding our role from who we biologically are, because again, it goes back to, we are nature. And um, this is uh, something that Sasha Kober talked about for hours. Basically, every single thing around you, if you walk outside and into your backyard, if I walk outside here, see the beach or palm trees, whatever, every single thing around us is there because of sex. Right. Not, not one thing on this planet would be right. here without sex. Sex is the most basic energy that this world is made of. So it, it, it should be the most basic, the most just ubiquitous thing in our awareness and life. And very powerful because that's how we take one of us and make two or three or four. You know, I mean, the sexual energy in our body is the only energy that could actually expand because, you know, there's the um, the laws of energy and physics. But the sexual energy is the only energy that could actually go past that law and actually expand on itself. Mm -hmm. So the sacred sexuality is just realizing the truth about what sexuality is in the world and is with everybody individually. And even when I'm communicating with someone in not a sexual way, just in a conversation and, you know, when you get that connection and you're talking like me and you were talking, I'll get a little weird here, but it's like that energy is flowing between us. Again, that is what that energy is. It's just the energies of our bodies, you know, communicating with something else in nature or it's someone else. I mean, that's what it is. And when you embody that energy, you're in that state, you're in that zone. You know, when, when I do my, um, um, my meditations on getting that energy going like every day, I'm just feeling like, Oh, I feel good now. Wow. I just, I feel happy. I feel good. I feel aware. I feel like things are just coming to me in life. That's what it's about. So it's not just about sex, you know, like um, two people fornicating. It's also about just being in life and happiness in life and manifesting in life. Amazing, brother. I mean, so everything for me, 
beautifully stated. I just have to appreciate your words. Um, and it's not woo, bro. My audience is totally down with what you're saying. So, but I mean, I understand why you say what you say, because, you know, you don't have a lot of audiences like mine and, and you know, you really don't know my backstory and I'm not getting into it, but uh, I don't give a shit two years ago when I went full blown woo woo consciousness uh, vibration. Um, you know, so now the people that follow me, they're all with you, man. They're going to be, they're going to profoundly be inspired by your podcast and your message, but um, everything is energy and frequency. These physical bodies are fucking flesh puppet skin suit avatars that are just moving you and I around. So when you and I are having a resonant, you know, conversation, even though I just used some poor language, it probably mm -hmm. dropped this a little bit. <laughs> it, 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 you know, it's, it's still the, the message is what matters and your energy moves my energy and vice versa. It's, you know, it's the story of the true master in physical form can maintain his presence or her presence under any condition. Right. And the example is you or me have this phenomenal, profound meditation in the morning and, you know, we reach 600 level of consciousness and we come back in and we take a shower and we're just amazing and everything is love and divinity and blah, blah, blah. And we get into our car and we go and we drive to wherever we're going work, you know, your office, coffee shop, and some raving maniac cuts you off on the freeway, right? Now you as a being are just been put into the autonomic fight or flight nervous system, right? This guy literally almost killed you no matter how resonant you are. So now it's a re you have a choice, right? No. So the master, the master of their state of being, and 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 this is the small, slim minority of humans, is literally not going to grip the steering wheel hard and go into fight or flight again, panic, survival programming. That person is going to be like, slow down. Wow, that person must be having a bad day. I'm going to send them love, and then waves at that being who's obviously having a bad day, insane, just driving hundred miles an hour, cutting you off on the freeway, risking lives of all sorts of other people. But you as a resonant human choosing, and this is the importance to respond out of love versus what 95% of people do, which is react out of fear and fight back and speed up and wave at them and like, motherfucker, I'm going to kill you or whatever. That being who's choosing to, re to respond out of love now has literally just set a resonant energy wave that overcomes the dissonant energy wave or the dissonant frequency that that crazy person, you know, driving erratically created. And 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 as you said, you know, everything is energy and frequency. The laws of physics. We we start getting into quantum physics, but a a, a positive, resonant, loving energy wave stops literally a dissonant energy wave or frequency in its tracks. And what people need to understand is that by sending that, and again, I know this is a rare person that will choose to respond out of love. You just help that person become disarmed. And, and this is Hawkins stuff. You've now just re re slightly risen the energetic frequency of everybody that's in that area on that part of the freeway by overcoming a dissonant frequency through resonance, right? So again, it's the law of resonance, you know, the law that people know as the law of attraction, but it's really the law of vibration or the law of resonance. And it completely stops dissonance or incoherent frequencies. And so it's like, when you can get to that place, and I, I'm, I'm a work in progress, as, as clearly are you, but when you can literally get to that place where that person does not make you react, um, that's when you know you're really a, a living master in a physical body. And I'll, I'll be very honest. My wife taught me to be this person. I mean, dude, I was the guy who would chase you down. You know what I'm saying? And like, say, hey, man, pull over. I'm going to pull you out of your car. I'm going to teach you a lesson for trying to kill me or other people around me, right? Um, and, you know, my wife eventually was just like, I don't want to even be in a relationship with you. You're insane. And then through that, she taught me. And this is, you know, seven or eight years ago. But like you still see it. Right. And so as I always say, you, you must understand everything is energy and frequency because when you choose to respond out of love, you raise the collective consciousness of everyone around you. Right. Remember what Hawkins said about 
all we need is, and I'm paraphrasing, but all we need is a certain amount of people at a 540 or higher vibration to lift the frequency. Again, it's all the ships in the harbor of the entire planet. And, 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 and then the matrix ends immediately. If we just had enough people get to neutrality and stop being opted into the divide and conquer duality of one side of the fight, Republicans, Democrats, conservatives, liberals, right? Like, it's a, it all ends, Rob. It, I mean, literally, like, overnight, it ends, Doc. It just ends like that. Yeah, you know, Dr. Stephen Greer has been talking about that a lot, too. And I, his apartment in D.C. was right up the street from my I used to see him all the time. I'd, like, stalk him in Whole Foods, like, hey, what's up, Doc? And talk to him, and, you know. Um, in physics, I think he's talking about nitrogen. When enough atoms of nitrogen, like, cool down, uh, a certain percentage, all of a sudden, ubiquitously, the whole thing just turns liquid, boom, like at once. Once you hit that certain titration point, it'll just all switch immediately. And he says that's what is also going to happen with the evolution of the planet. Enough people hit that titration point, and everyone's just going to, boom, change at once. Yeah. yeah. And, and one of my, of people, go ahead. And one of my favorite exercises i love doing with what you were talking about you know someone getting into altercation with you or something like that i learned from greg braden and it's always stuck with me i loved it i love he has some amazing stuff greg braden he would teach this blessing exercise so you have a problem with someone or just whatever even someone that you care about or whatever but anybody just say you know you got a problem with someone just say you know what God bless them and watch, have a visualization and watch mm -hmm. when you say God bless them, watch how they change and watch just in your mind's eye, watch them be blessed and feel what it feels like for them to change. That's right. And then say, now God bless me and watch how you change also with the blessing from God. And then say and observe, God bless everyone that's witness to us and watch all of them change too. So in this way, you're offering change for that person, for yourself, and everybody that's actually a witness to you. I mean, that's a profound thing, and I use that all the time. Even when, when I'm just like ready to really hit somebody and I walk away and breathe, I'm like, you know what? Bless them, bless me, bless everybody that's witness to us. And the energy is just like, ah, oh, it just feels like nice and grounded between you and that person. It's beautiful, man. Dr. Greg is an amazing being himself um with your amazing being this is a profound podcast um one of the best ones probably i've ever done i mean I, I like oh, it. what you say is i mean for me bro everything is consciousness now and mm -hmm. when i speak to people who truly walk the walk and talk the talk like i know and like you said you know we together rose or you know there was a there was a conscious frequency let's just say this there was a conscious frequency increase in this podcast and it will help others who watch this. But I, you know, I want to say something else about what you just said because I I can't remember who it was. It was a mentor of mine, and I, I his name. There's been so I've been so blessed. I've had so many mentors, but I don't remember the person. But he said that you could test this. Um, what you just said, what Dr. Greg is doing too, um, with any person on the planet by doing this. He said. If you just walk up to anyone, the and he would, you know, use the analogy of the meanest, baddest, gangster, thug looking, tatted up dude, big, you know, swole, jacked, whatever you want to call it. And the guy literally looked like if you would make eye contact with him, he would kill you. And you walked up to him, no matter what your size, whether you're a woman or a man, and you looked him right in the eye you know, consciously without fear and, sh you know, reached your hand out to shake their hand and say, Hey, I, I want to introduce myself to you. My name is so-and-so. How are you doing today? And again, with passion and a, and, a, and a profound energetic vibration, dude, even that person would look you back in the eye and smile and say, man, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. I mean, it's incredible how that is ringing true. Now I'm telling people and saying this, and I don't think I've ever put this on the show. Just try it. Practice that. Go into a subway, you know, anywhere in a big city and see if you can do that. Now, if it doesn't work out for you, 
<laughs> it's because, well, I mean, this is the truth. If it doesn't work out for you, that's a vibration check too. That means that you are in not vibrating what I would call in resonance or not where you need to be. And you're creating fear in him, right? Because again, everything is the Heisenberg principle. You know, we, the observer creates the effect. It's, it, we're in a simulated reality because through our words, thoughts, and actions, we can create what it is that we desire, right? So again, I always call it the, the, the divine mirror or the universal mirror. What you put out is what you give off. So if you walk up to this quote unquote menacing figure, which you're obviously defining as menacing anyway, because of the way the person looks, and you go up to that person and you say, again, in your heart of hearts, and you're feeling like I want to shake this hand, person's hand and say, how are you doing? That's the energy that you're putting in. And so that's the energy that that person's going to give off. And honestly, dude, I have done this two or three times in my life as an experiment and it worked. And that person was like, man, thanks for asking. <laughs> you know, and so I like under my breath, you know, I'm thinking like, this is incredible. And this is before I understood the laws of quantum physics like I do now. And again, it's just a law of vibration or the law of resonance. Um, but it did, it's, it, that's, the, I mean, I love that, you know, and I, and I knew that from reading his books and stuff like that too. But, um, you know, that's just the way it is, bro. Like each of us every single day can choose to respond out of love or react out of fear. And when we react out of fear, we're not in control at a full level. The ego is calling the shots. And 2,000 years ago, walking around on the plains of the Serengeti, we needed more survival programming. You know, we needed to be looking over our shoulder for a saber-toothed tiger who was going to eat us. But today, in the civilized world, we have to align our souls, you know, with our ego and allow the soul, the higher self, the super conscious wisdom, whatever you want to call it, God, to call the shots. And God to choose how you respond. And as you, you know, you, you're obviously a practitioner because of just even the way you speak now, I mean, you're profound in that you're observed, you're very reserved and you, you're, you're, you're centered and then you come out. But I mean, it's like, you have to, you have, again, it, it does take practice. I don't even like using the word work, right? Cause then that defines it as like, it's drudgery or it's hard, but. It no, but practice. actually work is effort that actually excels you because yeah. otherwise it's struggles. Struggles when you put effort and you don't get anywhere, right. but work is when you put in the work and it it, it it changes. So that's good. That's that's true. And I'm glad you corrected me on that. That is absolutely true. Doc, man, let me put your sights up here and stuff. What a profound, amazing podcast. So if people want to work with you versus want to connect with you versus want to maybe interview you for a podcast. And believe me, that's coming now. Uh, what's the best way for them to do that? Um, through my website, healprofoundly.com. You could email me through there. Um, yes, social media. I mean, I get a, a lot of people just like sending me DMs and stuff on there. So that doesn't work too well. The best way is just, yeah, go to healprofoundly.com and email me from there. Dude, you're like me. You're gonna laugh at this. I have to, this is just bonus material. Uh, our our Instagram feed for our company. We we just fired our our agency because they weren't doing a good job. Let's let's just leave it at that. And uh, so it's been like two or three weeks that nobody's answering our our business, which is a you know a big cosmetic business right now on Instagram. And there'll be people in the DM saying, "Does anybody even respond to you? What kind of a company?" Are you? And I literally like three days ago was just like wanting to have fun, and I went in there. And I said. Every now and then, <laughs> <laughs> like 10 different people, but I, I feel you on that. That is not a place to have professional, courteous, great, grateful or gratitude filled conversations on DMS. My God, that's the last place. So, yeah. So, I mean, guys don't DM this man, go to his website, fill out the contact form, you know, be a legitimate, you know, conscious human being and go that way. But, uh, Doc, man, again, I'm profoundly grateful to have you on the show here today. I very rarely ever do podcasts over 60 minutes, but you had so much great to say. Let me let me just give you the final word. Um, you know, just what you're talking about, just, you know, putting that good energy up there, being a high evolved person. 
me, I walk around, no matter where I'm walking around, I have a smile on my face, I have eye contact with people, just look at people and smile at them. I mean, you might just change somebody's day. You might change somebody who who they are right now just by smiling at them and just looking them in the eye and just being, you know, just give them a little nod and say hi. I mean, if we all did that in this world, just that would be a better place. Profound words, brother. Thank you so much for coming on the Jay Campbell podcast. So for all of you guys and gals who watched this amazing podcast today, please support the amazing people. Please follow him on Instagram, Dr. Greedy, which actually used to be his uh, street graffiti artist name, which is pretty amazing. Again, internationally renowned guy. Uh, go to his YouTube. Uh, doc, uh, you can see the URL, but it's Dr. Cyprian forward slash videos, facebook.com, Dr. Robert Cyprian. And then, of course, his website, Heal Profoundly dot com and remember raise your vibration to optimize your love creation we will see all of you guys very soon